Hi. Now, in this question then, we've got to show that using the formula for sigma r and sigma r squared, both going from r equals 1 to n, we've got to show that sigma r going from 1 to n of 3 times 2r minus 1 all squared is equal to n times 2n plus 1 times 2n minus 1 for all positive integers n. So, if you'd like to have a go at this and haven't done so already, just give you a moment to pause the video. Do come back and check your work solution with mine. Okay, let's see how you got on if you did try this. Well, first of all, what are these formulas that we should be familiar with for sigma r and sigma r squared? Well, they're these ones here. And uh, you can find these generally in your formula book. Okay, so uh, it does help though, obviously, if you can try and remember them. But uh, let's start then with what we've got here. And so we'll copy this down. We've got sigma r going from 1 to n then of 3 times 2r minus 1 all squared. Now the first thing I'd want to do is take out our constant out the front of the sigma. So we'll put that out the front, and then next I just want to expand 2r minus 1 all squared. So if we expand that, we're going to get 4r squared minus 4r, and then plus 1. And this summation then is going from r going from 1 to n. Next, I want to start to multiply 3 with each one of these terms and just break it up, okay, expand it. So what we're going to get is 3 times the 4, which is 12, and then we've got sigma of r squared. And then for the next one, we're going to have minus 12 multiplied by sigma r. And for the last one, we're going to have plus 3 times sigma 1. And all of these summations go from r equals 1 all the way up to n. Okay, so just squeeze that in there. Now, we can pick up on the formulae that we've got up here. So, for the first one, we've got 12 then, multiplied by n over 6, multiplied by n plus 1, and then 2n plus 1. For the next one, we've got minus 12 then, multiplied by n over 2 times n plus 1. And for the last one, when we've got 3 multiplied by the sigma 1, if we sum up 1 n times, we're going to get n. Next, what I can see is that we can cancel through. 6 into 12 goes 2. 2 into 12 here goes 6 times. Next I want to uh, look to see if there's any common factors. What I notice is that there's an n in each of them. And I can see we need an n anyway, so that's quite useful. So we'll pull that n out. And then what we've got next, if we pull this n out, we've got 2 multiplied by n plus 1 times 2n plus 1. So if we start to, um, I was going to say start to expand it. Now I'll just hold back for a moment, okay? I know I'm sure we could expand it, but let's just leave it like that. And then we've got minus 6. We've pulled this n out the front, so we've got n plus 1. And then again for this last term, we pulled the n out, so we just have a 3 there. So if we now start to expand this, we've got 2n squared times the 2 at the front, so that's going to be 4n squared. Then you're going to have an n plus 2n, so that's 3n times 2 is 6n. And then you've got plus 1 times the 2 is plus 2. And then expanding this, we've got minus 6n minus 6 plus 3. And if we group up our terms inside the bracket here, we've got 4n squared, and then we've got, well, the n terms cancel, and you've got 2 
plus the 3 is 5, minus the 6 is minus 1. So what you've got here is the difference of two squares. So this factorizes then to n times 2n plus 1 and 2n minus 1. And that's what we had to show. All right.